Alrighty, what's up guys, this is Cobra. welcome to some tournament cast action. This one checking out the French Prodigy, known as Elio, dude. Not only is this guy a reigning champion, he's also unbeaten so far in this tournament as well, with two straight wins on the bounce going up against Mr. Veritas over here. Before we get to that, check out what he's running. Some giant specialist versus, I believe, Ariel? Some aerial specialist, man. Okay, dude. All right, man. Two of the top tier specialists. We also just saw a immediate sell on a pack of steel balls here. So Elio does not feeling those at all. Oy, oy, oy. By the way, I've been keeping tabs on this tournament as I've been watching. A couple of marksmen coming out here. That is interesting. Very interesting positioning as well. But yeah, I've been watching this tournament so far, dude. Elio's scores against his opponents have been very one-sided, dude. I don't know, man. This guy's just insane. Some even say the rumors speak that Elio might actually be a distant descendant of Napoleon. I don't know if that's the truth. I'm just letting you know what I've heard. Okay. Okay, man. A couple of crawlers come down. Behind building crawlers or backline crawlers. Behind building crawlers it is. Look at that. Look at how mirrored their formation patterns are, dude. What is this? Holy high MMR, dude. Never seen this in my games, but that's not saying much. Give my games all like 1500, 1600, you know? Maybe this is just some crinkle brain action. Either which way, the storm is going to cause a huge amount of issues here, obviously. As they always do in round one. I actually kind of feel like Stormcallers just shouldn't be a starting unit, you know? I don't know. Like, I'd feel more comfortable... No, I wouldn't, actually. I was about to say something stupid. I was about to say I'd feel more comfortable if, like, Wasps were a starting unit. But that'd just be horrible if your opponent starts off with Stangs. <laughs> That's just, like, losing the first two rounds for free, you know? Okay, yeah. Not too many surprises. The Stormcallers are going to absolutely butcher everything. Um, would you look at that, man? Elio drops round one. All right, man, Napoleon, dude. Let's see what you got, man. Let's see if we can pull this one back, dude. <laughs> okay, round two. What options do we have, man? Deployment specialist, subsidized marksman. Um, It's hard to give up on deployment specialists, right? It just helps you fill out your chaff line so, so bigly. <laughs> so, so quickly, you know? Yeah, it's got to be, man. It's got to be. All right, man. Okay. How are we going to deal with these Stormies, dude? Pack of Chaff will probably come out here eventually, just to kind of draw their fire. Oh, it's actually just going to happen right now. Okay. And we're just going to answer with Stormcallers of our own. Right. I wonder because this guy is like out on the flanks, we're going to see Stormcallers on the inside here, so they're shooting towards the angle of Chaff. Looks like not so much. We might be a little bit riskier. With these crawlers kind of branching off and just chasing these guys down. Okay, we've got a little bit of wiggle action going too. And all right. I tell you, man. Steel balls were also sold as well. I should actually just point that out too, man. Not a believer in the steel balls, this Elio. To be fair, against what we're up against, uh, I don't blame the man. Just make a whole lot of sense. Uh, unless you're starting into something like what? I don't know. Akis, sledgehammers maybe, maybe enemy steel balls that could be worth holding on to, I guess. Maybe a rhino specialist on the uh, other side of the board. They can make sense. Against them like this though, not so much. Oh god, yeah, against area specialists too. Yeah, selling those steel balls almost certainly going to be the correct call. Once again, man, we're just trying to minimize losses here a little bit. There's no way that these stormies actually win this duel. Even with good RNG. And it's just another tickle of damage. Not bad, man. I don't think Elio will be too sad about that, given that he started off his game with selling steel balls and buying the mobile beacon. Ooh, we get our first big chunker round. Triple Rhino or single super powerful Stangs or Phoenix. Is there that much value in the Phoenixes, really? Feels like there's much more value in a three, uh, three, yeah, three cost or three rank Mustang, to be fair. What if anyone's going to go for some Rhino shenanigans here? Nah, both going to go with the standard. It's got to be. I mean, rank three Stangs, you know. Buy a couple, yeah, buy a couple more, give them range. They're, they're always just going to give you value, right? 
Like they don't even have to be countering anything in particular. If they're rank three, they're just gonna do they're gonna do a good job against more stuff. Elio yet to slam more stangs, however. He goes for the range. Is he gonna go for exactly the same play? <laughs> he actually is, dude. They spent their supply almost exactly the same, dude. Are you kidding me? So Elio, 100 supply left. He's probably looking at more chaff here. Could be another set of crawlers here, maybe? Or maybe in a horizontal pattern is better because we're going up against storm cores. Crawlers, crawlers. Okay, they're going to go in the back corner after all. Okay. Tight, tight, tight. It's pretty hilarious that they both went exactly the same thing. In fact, they're just their builds in general are like very, very similar. Mix of backline crawlers and chaff. Forward facing crawlers. Couple of storm callers each. <laughs> like they're running the same stuff, you know. But you know what? I think there's a lot to be said about that, you know? I think there's a lot to be said about that. It's like I think there's a reason. Like certain uh certain uh, like what like build patterns, build orders just make sense and just kinda cover your ass against getting wrecked by um But like a super, super hard counter coming out to whatever the hell it is you're doing. Stangs always get value. Chaff is always going to get value. You might as well slam it early, that kind of thing. Oh my god. Are they actually going to live? Okay, no, the Stangs do die in the end. I was going to say, if there was a few Stangs here left alive, maybe they could actually do a little bit of something here. But I tell you what, man, Veritas not lost a round yet, dude. He's taking it to Napoleon, man. Okay. Round four. Big options. Not really. It's like heavy armor or orbital bombard, really, isn't it? Elio going for the heavy armor, so he has plans. Ooh, just coming out with the Vulcan straight away. Yeah, Vulcan's like my favorite answer recently to uh, Stangs. If you're getting outstanged a little bit. I feel like it's just good. Oy, 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 oy. Ooh, that's naughty, dude. That's cheeky right there. Goddamn oil placement right here, dude. He's oiling Veritas up. Now this orbital bombard is going to be quite devastating. 200 supply left on Elio. Is he really going to... Yeah, is he really going to spend the cash to like uh, barrier against this? It doesn't look like it. He's just going to spread out his guys. Crawlers at the back. Probably going to see Fangs on this side as well, right? Ooh. Oh, they went right here. Oh, God. Ooh, that's really bad. <laughs> They're probably just going to get mulched now by the uh, bombard. Just unfortunate. Losing a bit of a 50-50 there. Uh, on Elio's side. And while this Vulcan is rather tanky. It's got a lot to do here, man. Thankfully, these crawlers are just going to run straight into this. So, I mean, you know. Both players placed uh, fresh chaff. And it's probably both going to die instantly. And painfully. Oil on the ground. Out comes the fire. And whoom! Lovely. Now, the Stangs... Oh, nice. They will actually drive into the fire as well, dude. Because of course they will. There goes the crawlers. Quite masterfully done. But we have nothing alive here. Oh, yeah, we do. We have Bill and Ben over here, man. They're coming in hot. Oh, bloody hell. The Vulcan's just stuck attacking nonsense. How deeply unfortunate is that? Look at all this crap it could have killed. <laughs> oh, that's pretty sad. And you know what, man? This is looking rough, dude. Ooh. Stormcall is getting themselves killed, but the fire is going to wear out. That hazard is gone with only a couple of neds left. Now dead. Elio takes another L, dude, even with the genius players. Veritas, man, he's sweating. Ooh. Ooh. Big sledgehammer transition, potentially. Ooh. A triple wraith, dude. This is a tough one. I mean, I love me some sledgehammers. I think I'd probably go the sledgehammers here. Just because there's so many stangs on the field. And I mean, sledges just chunk stangs. And level 3 sledgehammers take a long time to die to uh, Stormcaller's men. And so, yeah. I'm Ren Hansen on the sledges. Oh, God. Ooh, that's really nasty, actually. If the Vulcan gets target locked attacking those, that's really, really bad news. And of all things, additional storm callers coming out here, man. 
Didn't expect to see that. But it might actually just be really, really excellent for getting these guys dead. They're also going to be slamming fire on the ground too. Okay. Damn. I almost felt like as soon as these sledges came out and just seeing this many stangs on the field, you know? I almost felt like maybe we would see something like um, two more packs of sledgehammers come out. Or maybe on the outsides even. And then just giving them like mechanical rage or something. I did not expect more stormies to come out. With the incendiary. Yeah, I thought we'd be trying to capitalize on the sledges, man, but okay, dude. Oh, does this guy get to latch? A lot really depends on if this, uh, this nerd here gets to latch on the Vulcan. It looks like it is actually quite easily just gonna walk through and get to latch on the Vulcan. Which is quite sad. Lots of fire on the ground, but the goddamn sledgehammers don't care about that. They only care about being direct hit. <clears throat> While we do have sledgehammer trades going on, it's taking a long time to get these guys dead. The extra chaff arriving now is fine, but there's still stangs left alive to just mulch these fangs. And so very, very quickly, the chaff line is just going to evaporate. And the stormies... They're putting up a damn good fight. They're going to get a bunch of kills to reduce damage taken. But once again, dude. I mean, saving grace, man, for Napoleon. He's only taking, like, tickles of damage. On occasion. The Jav comes out. That could be pretty tight. He already has a Vulcan on the field, though, so we could maybe see something... Ooh, or not. Never mind. Okay, smoke bomb comes down. No hesitation. No hesitation at all. All right, man. I thought maybe we'd see like a Vulcan, uh, Vulcan's Descent come out and um, additional techs picked up on Elio's Vulcan. But it wasn't to be the case. Still deciding on a red side. It goes for Vulcan's Descent. He could slam that on a flank and cause big, big problems on Elio's backline here. He does actually go for that play. Elio's got to be... Uh, he's got to be He's got to be awake to this possibility. I wonder if he'll just let it slide and say, screw it. He does have a barrier that's sort of covering base as well, but how long is this really going to last? Like, normally this barrier would protect for a long time against a Vulcan trying to backstab your base. Just seems like a lot to sacrifice men on either side here, you know? 600 supply left, man. What will he do with it? Red's plan is clear. Mass melting points. Ooh. The cell coming out of the Vulcan. You know, not too surprising. It wasn't really getting a whole lot done. It's also just getting target locked a lot on things like barriers and then the tanks, like, and then it's just dying and feeding a melting point. Oh, wow. Okay. Straight into the war factory then. All right. Can a war factory outrange a melting point? It can't, right? And the goddamn Vulcan is going to get in. The level 3 Stangs are going to give it a good run for its money. Oh my god, they actually kind of pulverize it with the help of the Stormcallers. Okay, it died much faster than I thought it would. Which is tight news for blue. We have a cheap War Factor in the ground now as well, by the way. Efficient Maintenance was picked up there as well. And so red really has to win this round and win it quite big. Because I feel like as soon as your opponent gets the War Factory established with Efficient Maintenance, like this is a really slow turn. If you're blue, right? And it's going to pay off big time. Oh my god. It's a, it's a really, really slow turn for blue. To just slam a war factory with no combat enhancements and just an economy enhancement. And now... Goddamn Elio, dude, could slam another war factory and start pumping upgrades here. And all of a sudden, things look real bad <laughs> if you're playing as red. Ion Blast coming down. That looks succulently positioned to me. Oh, wow. Hang on, hold the phone. That was an upgrade on the War Factory, man. Pumping it up to level 2, we get a big cell coming out on the Sledgies. Cashing in on those guys. Heavy Armor gets moved over. I guess we're going to see these guys get sold next round as well. This has got to be funding War Factory plus another tech upgrade. You've got to imagine. But then again, he has to borrow cash if he wants to pick up another tech. Could borrow cash and pick up range. Ooh. Okay. 
Red preempting the Ion Blast by the looks of things. Opting in to the Missile Interceptor War Factory. Which is going to take a little bit of a beam from the Ion Blast. So maybe not preempting the Ion Blast so much, actually. Then again, I don't think Ion Blast can actually kill uh, even a level 1 War Factory, but... But okay, man. We certainly do not see cash get borrowed on the part of Napoleon. So many wiggly things going on right now. 200 supply left to burn. It's going to go plus range and a plus defense upgrade on the research center. So this war factory nearly has half a million health already. It is quite the raid boss, so it needs a melting point to connect on it. Is the first melting point drops, else it's really just not going to die, uh, realistically. Let's see the kind of damage this Iron Blast does to this War Factory, man. Yeah, it took like the max damage that a War Factory can take, and it's about 40% of his health uh, from an Iron Blast. But look at this guy. Oh my god. <laughs> Absolute detonation. Oh, bro. Oh god. This is one of those games, dude. Look at the damage here. Oh my god. No, is he dead? Oh, Jesus, dude. That's just savage. What the hell, man? <laughs> so Elio is losing. Lost five rounds on the bounce. Not that convincingly, though, which of course Veritas over here is going to rue. Not getting more damage done while he could. And then Elio just wins in two flat rounds. With the early War Factory drop. Not that early, actually, by the way. But gets away with the economy War Factory drop. Chases it up. Doesn't even need any extra techs in it to take the win. Just levels that son of a gun and that's it. Damn, man. All right. Back on the scoreboard, man. We have Elio with three wins representing the Jumapel community. <laughs> oh, God. My French is terrible. I'm not even going to go there. We've got Steel Sam with three wins. He just won an 11-round absolute fiesta. It was incredible. Um, but yeah, uh, the deployment phase was getting messed up in the spectator view, so I'm probably not even going to reveal that to y'all. Look at Kapal's go, dude. Oh my goodness. Come on, Kapal's. You can do this, man. We feature Kapal's replays very, very often on our channel, man. He's all about those crazy meme builds. Who's he up against? Ooh, ooh. he's up against Streamer Eliminati. Oy, 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 oy. Don't be stream sniping now, Kapal's. God damn ya. Yeah. I'm tempted to just watch Napoleon again, to be honest, but maybe we'll tune into a Steel Sane game. Real quick. Yeah, maybe we, maybe we just go into the Steel Sane game. See what Steely Boy is up to. Look at that face. How can we not watch this guy? I tell you, man, if Kapals loses his game, I'm gonna be so frustrated, dude. But if Kapals wins his game and goes 4 0, oh, he might end up going up against one of the former champs, man. Oh, man. No pressure now, Kapals, man. And all right, we are in. Sir Steel's in. Opened up with some supply specialist action. Crawler, chef on the back line. Good old sledgies. Marksman opener. And he's sort of going up against a stormy opener. Three Akis and a couple packs of fangs. I gotta feel like these fangs are gonna die rather rapidly. Unless... Perfectly positioned Arclites. Actually, we're gonna take care of those guys pretty fast. The issue is gonna be getting the sledgehammers dead. Arclites, no good at killing sledges. Stormcallers, that's a damn good hit of missiles. But even then, they're still actually able to keep a few models on the field and keep aggro on those guys, which is just really, really crucial for the maxman. Tight, tight, tight. Three Stormies win on the other side. Oh my god, they actually get the building kill. But it's not enough. Steel Sane takes a little bit of a tickle. On the first round. Okay, man. Both players in this match, obviously. 3 and O oh at present. Poppin' the hell off. Okay, man. Dionis, extended range sledge. I mean, you got to, dude. Dude, I've got a video ready to release right after I'm done recording this. That's all about extended range sledgehammer. Let me tell you something, dude. I never skip this card. I see this card. You already know what I'm doing, dude. Sledgy. Get the goddamn mech rage range up and going. Maybe even armor piece and bullets. Yeah, man. 
that's what it's all about. Now, it does obviously reduce the health of your sledgehammers, which might make them die just that little bit quicker to the Stormcallers, which is something that you've got to be a little bit careful of. They become more of just like, um, well, I like to call them artillery tanks at that point, right? Squishier, but better range. And so the chaff has got to be just right for Steel Sin. And both players basically just filling out their chaff lines right now. Uh, minus this pack of phoenixes, obviously. Ugh. Stormcaller's landing a fine hit on those fangs. Alright. Plus range of the tanks is going to do them a service against these nerds. But again, it does just make them more vulnerable uh, to the Stormcallers. So you've got to be careful of that. Thankfully, only half the Stormies shooting at the big pack over here. That's going to help out quite a bit, but on account of the Phoenixes on this side, those Sledges die rather quickly. I just don't think there's enough numbers left to do this. Especially with this Phoenix stealing the building kill. Dude, those Phoenixes were really, really high value. They got a lot of work done. It's only one pack thus far. So you don't need to go overboard answering those uh, if you steal sin. Ooh. 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 Okay, man. There's options. Really, it's all going to be all about the fortress of the steel balls, though, I guess. Ooh. Wow. The hackers coming out? Why? Is, is Blue worried about Steel Sin going to Steel Balls, maybe? What on earth? The preemptive scorpion's coming down. That makes you think that maybe Blue is uh, suspecting the fortress coming down from Steel Sin this turn. So he's just getting ahead of that uh, with the scorp. Scorpions tend to just be extremely good uh, giant killers. Uh, for their cost. Look at the amount of goddamn sledges coming down, dude. Dude, this is my kind of... This this just looks like one of my boards, dude. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. I mean, it's early days. I'm sure it's going to get much more impressive than my meme uh, action. But yeah, man. Wow, dude. It's, the hackers I really, really did not expect. I mean, I can see it in the late game if you get like four or five hackers from a unit drop and then drop them all with barrier. That can be pretty cool. I think I'm actually of the opinion, by the way, that I really like this new patch. I wasn't sure at first. I played a good few games. You know, now it's been out for a few days, had some time to test it. Hack is finding a tiny bit of value, but they will eventually just die to the marksman over there. This guy's about to get just DDT'd off the fortress as well. Oh, I didn't even have a chance before the marksman got to him. But yeah, I, th I think I actually quite like this patch. I like the added mind game. Of, um, ooh, if this maximum dies, oh, yo, 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 that's an absolute disaster. It means that Steel Sin literally cannot win this round. Damn, that's really, really rough. I thought you would have had that one. Yeah, they added mind game of trying to predict what your opponent's gonna pick while also picking something that counters his current build, and you know what I mean? I just think it's really cool. Ooh, enhancement module comes out for both players. Instant upgrade on the Phoenixes over here. Are we just going to leave the enhancement module on these guys? No cell on the phoenixes? That'd be really quite curious. Okay, now there we go. I wasn't sure there for a second. He was getting quite low on supply. I wasn't quite sure if he was going to go ahead and buy the uh, field recovery. Oh, he field recovers something else. He got rid of the hacker over here. Okay. That also makes sense. Oi, 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 oi. Steel Sin spent everything... Counter storm callers coming out, which will hit very, very nicely into these guys. Very good, very good. These scorpions, though, man. Ooh. Looking deadly. They also got the plus range enhancement this round as well. So these sledgehammers, they ain't safe no more. Gonna oh, start getting absolutely chunked here real quick. Crawler's getting a little bit of distraction work done, but there's added scorpions on either side now as well. Chungus over here going down. It looks like there might just be enough levels on the sledgehammers to kind of hold the line on this occasion. Stormcaller's not quite getting it done. And Steel Saint takes the first W. So, we have tanks with a lot of levels now. you got to imagine that we're going to see, you know, a level or two. Oh my god, okay, never mind. This could change everything. Double Vulcan is available. Double Overlord is available. Ooh. God damn, dude. Oh, man. This is tough. 
I think I'd go for double overlord if I were Steel Sin. Personally. Yeah, it goes for the double overlord action. I just feel like there's not many good answers to it right now. It's just a couple of phoenixes. Um, and if you just got like uh, wasp production on your overlords, that's nowhere near enough uh, to deal with these nerds. Meanwhile, Blue's still deciding what to pick up. He can't re- Oh god, he does go the Vulcans. Okay, I thought that maybe he'd just go the Overlords as well, man. But the double Vulcan? I'd be real worried, because there's already a fortress on the ground. And like, barriers, just in general. Especially mass barriers. It's such a hard counter, man. To uh, fire mechanics. I mean, there's good shield break on Blue. Maybe he can still get this off. Maybe he can still get off the, uh, the Vulcan value. And crack the shields nice and quickly. When they eventually drop, I'm not just thinking like a round or two in advance here, I guess. But alright. They're in a nice, far back, like safe position. At the least. Still a bit shocked, man, to not see the uh, Phoenixes getting sold and repurchased. And the like. We're seeing more cells come out on the other hackers over here on blue as well. Okay, and just for just for a note, we did see range enhancement come out in the sledges. The are, these are 165 meter range sledgehammers now. Look at them go here. Just nutty range. I mean, look how far back they steered, dude. Like they're gonna die last every. Like st they, they have like the same range as the goddamn storm callers over here. Kind of insane. They're definitely nice and safe from the scorpions up until the very last moment. Um, just because they're like they're literally like the last unit to uh, to get connected again, uh, connected on. Look at them go in the middle, dude. Just matching the stormcaller range, bro. Extended range sledgehammer is insane. Nobody can tell me otherwise. I think it's crazy as hell. Okay. Because like the health they lose doesn't even matter, man. Because they're at a safe distance all the time anyway. You know what I'm saying? I think it's nuts. I think it's so good. Okay, man. Orbital Bombard. Orbital Bombard as well for blue, maybe? It's either that or shield device, right? Uh, if you're blue. And slam down like four barriers this round. Okay, he's gonna go with his own Orbital Bombard. He's gonna chance it. Steel Sin here. Were I him, I'd go barrier. And I'd slam a couple fortresses, man. Oh, he spent all of his... What, 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 what did he purchase, man? Crawlers, the fangs, I believe. Maybe. I don't even know where that cash went. <laughs> I wasn't paying enough attention, man. Anyways, dude, we have some carry Vulcan action going. Scorching flims. So if they do get to connect against the sledges, they will be able to melt them down pretty fast. But that's a tall ask, man. I think that honestly, as soon as you if you have extended range sledgehammers. And you get these two tech upgrades on your sledges. Like, unless you're up against a fortress spam. You know, and like really mass barriers. I feel like there's nothing your opponent can place on the ground that the sledgehammers can't deal with. You know, minus like mass fortress barriers. Um, because yeah, I mean, they're connecting on this Vulcan right now. I mean, look, at it's just getting chunked, dude. Like, it's hitting them back now. But it's just gone. <laughs> Oh my god, they actually all nearly died, but but you know, I feel like they're just such a force to be reckoned with. Oy 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 oy. That said, man, Scorpions are doing a pretty good job over here. The Phoenixes too. Oh my god, they actually just one-shot that goddamn uh, Overlord. And so in the end, it's 150, 200 damage to steal the inside. Oy 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 oy. Okay, man. Top Supply Specialist becomes an option. It's quite late in the game. Are you really going to get that supply back? You could go Senior Manufacturing here and spam Fortresses if you're still saying. I think that that's probably the answer. Wow. Disagrees. Goes Top Supply Special. Alrighty. He's trusting in the long game here then. Oi, 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 man. Alright, what are we looking at, man? Mothership. Could well be a double overlord drop here. 
Ooh, goes into acid attack on the scorpion, dude. So it's just as well that we didn't spam out the fortresses. Uh, just yet, at least. Steely can pick up another fortress. Uh, sorry, another overlord if he would like. That's just a crap load of fangs coming down. Ooh. That is so many fangs. Getting real worrisome, man. The more fangs they are, the more devastating a portable shield uh, pickup can be. Get real gnarly real quick. Alright, man. Let's see if these overlords spamming out these wasps is gonna be enough. They got extra fangs to worry about now. And I want to note that the chef is falling behind a little bit on Steel Sin's side. And so we're no longer at the stage where the sledgehammers are super, super well protected. We still have chef arriving for blue. Few crawlers left alive. Fortresses. We'll just about live. Got phoenixes here though doing stupendous amounts of damage and only wasps left alive to take care of them on this side. Building kill helps a hell of a lot. All right, man. Turns out to be enough. Huge. Ungodly damage. Mass levels available on the tanks. Wonder if we'll see that. Nuke, Electromag, Ion Blast. Okay. At this point, I am now convinced. Okay, oh my god, double nuke coming out. Okay, yeah. I just feel like there's so much threat from uh, all of those battlefield spells that... Yeah, I would, if I hadn't already, I would definitely go barrier fortresses now. And like, fortress here, and maybe like fortress here or something, is what I would do. Steel Sin says, no man, he ain't doing that. He gets the barrier up on the wasps, which is going to uh, obviously combo with the wasp production on the overlords. The barrier is going up as somewhat impactful. Widespread, efficient use of barriers rather than trying to cover the entire the entire map. Blue, even more efficient though. Just because his army is more balled up, he can afford to get away with that. Wasps on this side almost certainly going to get utterly devastated. But this side they're going to punch through. Will the wasps make that much difference though? Will they really get it done? Oh my god, this is a really, really tough one to call. Who's got the better nuke here, man? I'm gonna rearrange camera a little bit so we can see most of what the hell is going on in this one. Uh... Well, the two overlords are definitely getting nuked. This barrier's gotta die. Okay, it does die just in time. So devastating nukes connecting on both sides, only just uh, on the side of blue. Look at that, dude. The tanks virtually unscathed. They just don't give a damn. I didn't know how they didn't get hit. Was there just a barrier here that just lived like, at the last possible second to save those guys from nuke? It kind of looked like it. Oh my god. Ends up being a bit of a landslide of a win in the end on account of the giant units. But this game seemed much, much closer than I think the final scoreline. Made it appear, man. All right, man. Next thing's next. Where or oh where is Kapals, dude? No, Kapals, dude, you How could you do this to us? No, I was hoping to catch the end of that game, but oh my god, it was a flawless victory, man. A well played, man, to Mr. Eliminati. Must be an absolute wrinkle brain over here. Oh, damn, dude. Hey, still 3 and 1, though, Kapals. Going strong, dude. And all right, it is time, boys. Clash of the Titans. It's only Mecha Napoleon. This is Steel Sid, dude. Let's do this, man. Wow, dude. So it just ends up that the two undefeated players that we've been checking out so far in this tournament are now going up against one another, each going into this with four straight wins, zero losses. We have Aerial Specialist here on Elio, opening up with Arclight's Stormcallers, going into Arclight... Uh, uh, God. <laughs> Sledgehammers. My throat, man. I need a drink in between rounds. And we've got some supply specialists going on, Steel Sid, as well, man. Okay, dude. These tournaments are feel long to cast, dude. I don't know how, like, you know, like the professional esports cast and stuff like that. How the hell do they do it, man? They must be, dr dude, they must be drinking so much. So many goddamn energy drinks, what have you. 
Caffeine. Keep the throat in check during those long casts. I can't even last a goddamn hour and a half. Okay, man. Anyways. Elio, Elio, Elio. Takes the opening round. Uh, anything here really decent? I mean, shield device or heavy armor, I suppose. The only real two. Unless someone's got, like, a plan for something they're going to drop the heavy armor on very, very quickly. Um, like, it sounds like Steel Sand does. Probably dropped it one of his tanks. Yep. Then I could have seen a skip there, maybe. But apparently, Elio has a plan, dude. Okay, Steel Sand. Yeah, heavy armor on the tank. A couple of phoenixes coming out. A little bit lacking on the chaff on Steel Sin side. And wow, dude. All right. Straight in with the Wraith. Taking advantage of that aerial specialist. Just clean up everything here. So, hey, going into those phoenixes on Steel Sin. Maybe just a good bit of foresight. Maybe expecting uh, Elio to go phoenixes himself. Can't imagine that he expected the Wraith, but. He's at least going to give him a fighting chance. Even if these phoenixes are on a real timer here, dude. They got to get this thing dead like right now. Because as soon as those tanks are dead, yeah, they are going to get it done. Okay. And so the phoenix is actually just making a massive, massive difference here. Now all of that said, still lacking a lot of chaff on Steel's inside. Almost definitely going to see that get uh, addressed. In this next round, just a couple of crawlers. Probably not quite going to cut it. What are we looking at here? Subsidized Aki. Could be an option. Rhino Salts kind of feels like it's off the cards for both players, given that air units are already on the field and can deal with a Rhino drop quite easily. Nano Repair. And apparently still saying sees value in it. Me personally. Nano repair? I don't know, dude. I don't see it. I don't like me that nano repair action. Ooh. Okay, dude. So Elio actually going for the Rhino in the end. It's just going to be a backline Rhino. Maybe just trying to defend against the potential of Rhino drops against him. To be honest. Like a defensive Rhino drop. And the good old classic Steel Sin kind of, uh, well, vertical pattern base hugging Stormies coming out. It seems to favor this formation pattern quite a bit. Ooh, ooh, with the cell on the wraith straight into the overlord. This will give the phoenixes a bit more trouble. Uh, that is for sure. Not that they still don't do very, very well into overlords, obviously. But unlike the wraith, the overlord will not get stuck killing the sledgehammers for very long. Which is more the point. But look at that dude. Neither player actually investing in that additional chaff. I really thought that uh, extra chaff would come down. Oh, never mind. <laughs> a little bit of fang action comes out. But Steel Sin's still just really, really thin on the chaff front, man. Alright. And defensive Rhino will just be arriving late. Now, is this Overlord going to be enough to punch through Steely Boy's tanks, man? The Counter Stormcallers will do more work for Steel Sin than Blue's. Uh, Stormies are doing just because they're shooting into uh, crawlers and sledges, which are a real pain for uh, storm crawlers to get dead. And it looks like the Overlord, as good as it's gonna be against bringing down the tanks, the tanks still just being level two with the heavy armor. They're gonna buy just enough time for the Phoenixes to get the job done, and so it's another tickle of damage. Not that that means anything against the Mecha Napoleon boys. This is the kind of bloke <laughs> that we've seen already lose five rounds on the bounce and ooh, make a stalwart comeback. Four stacks of stangs coming out. Wow. Think that's got to be tempting for Steel Sin. Just because the fangs are on the field, you want an efficient way to kill off fangs. You want to make sure that they can't pick up the likes of portable shield later on and cause you big, big problems. Stangs just kind of deal with that. And Elio also going into the Stangs as well. Yeah, you buy this many Stangs. Oh, sorry, you unlock this many Stangs. You can't not just pick up range on these guys, right? It's just, it's just, it's just always the correct play, you know? It's 800 supplies worth of Stangs here, man. What's another 300 supply to make them uh, basically twice the unit? 
So I'd imagine we're going to see the range come out on Elio's side. Grading attack first. Right, and now we do see the uh, Mass Recruit come out on just a whole bunch more uh, chaff units here. Just the frontline chaff. Makes a lot of sense. That'll be Steel Sins Tearman. Still not applied the Nano Repair Kit to anything just yet. Just biding his time with that for the time being. The range drop does come out on the Stangs, as was foretold. Okay. 400 supply left to go. Running a little low on time here. Opts in the end for just bonus range on the Overlord and some levels on the Stormies. It gets to help the Stormies kill off these goddamn tanky boys over here. Now the real question is, how is either player going to respond to the sudden influx of Stangs next round? Is it going to be a case of maybe mass upgrading the Arclights for range for Steel Sin? Or is it going to be something more like more Stormcallers and give the Stormcallers Incendiary Bomb? Likewise for blue as well. I mean, they're both basically facing the same challenge right now. With the building dropping, though, Overlord is just going to kind of get plinked down here. Swarmed and overwhelmed. Now, the problem is with Elio, I wonder if he just ran out of time a little bit with upgrading that Overlord, and now he's kind of stuck with a teched-up Overlord. And he probably doesn't want to sell the Overlord anymore as a result, you know? He's kind of soft locked in uh, to this Overlord path now. It doesn't necessarily mean he has to push it. Well, it seems that he is pushing it because he just leveled the Son of a Gun to level 2. Okay, the Storm Callers with the Fire is the option that Elio is going to go with. Are we going to see something similar come out from Steel Sim? And that's the real question. I guess not, man. No upgrades at all coming out on the Arkeys to deal with the uh, Stangs. I guess Elio's just... Uh, sorry, I guess Steel Sin's just feeling somewhat comfortable right now. Plus range on the Phoenixes makes it so that they will stay behind the Mustang line. Once all is said and done, they outrange the Stangs by 25 meters at present. Which is why the uh, range upgrade is so, so valuable on the Phoenixes right now. That said... Is the incendiary bomb going to be enough to turn this? These guys have got to fire quickly. Because they are not really long for this world. Under the shadow. Uh, of the bombardment. Ooh, the full pack was just taken out right there, dude. Oh, two more drop here. We've only got a couple left. But they get a good amount of fire on the ground. Might just to say it be enough. But see now the build path for Steel Sane is really quite simple, right? You just spam war factories with missile defense. And those literally counteract the Overlord projectiles. And shoot down the Stormcaller projectiles. And what does Elio answer that with? Acid Scorpions? Does he have time to build artillery range Acid Scorpions? Would that be an answer? I'm sure there's other answers too. Bit of split attention right now though. Incendiary Bomb maybe? Uh, for blue, I mean. Could be a thing. Does go for the incendiary bomb. And he's going to go for quite a risky one, to be fair. That's definitely a spot where Steel Sam might feel vulnerable and want to protect uh, these stangs. Subtree and Blitz comes out on the crawler, so we're not going to go into the War Factory yet. To be fair, it's quite early to be going into the War Factory. If you want to buy a couple of factories and... um. Oh god, look, this is what I mean, man. Blue a little bit kind of forced into sticking with the Overlords here, man. Because of that range enhancement pickup, it feels so bad to have to sell your Overlord then. Um, At that stage. But is the Overlord really going to be the answer, man? The Phoenixes are actually leveled on either flank as well. So they're able to deal with these Overlords quite easily right now. They do have Mothership, so we can dip into that in the future as well. Hmm. Well, saving grace for blue this turn is that Steel Sin did not spare the supply for the, uh, like, what, somewhat, like, backline shields to protect against this. Yet more Stormcallers coming out. 
doubling down a little bit on the Stormcaller action here. Getting some fire off in the middle. Oi, 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 oi. This is just a mad rush of crawlers. It's going to cause all kinds of problems for these guys. Wow, they actually just get to connect and mulch. Like half of the uh, Stormcallers here on this side. Quite devastating, but we have no Stangs left alive on this side now as well. Will that be enough? Basically just tanks protecting these Phoenixes right now. It's not looking that great. For Steel Sin on this particular round. Hmm. Yeah. How much supply does Steel Sin have next round? Can he afford to drop double fortress? Uh, sorry, a double war factory? With missile defense? Because, ooh. These overlords are really starting to pile drive home the damage. What do we got, man? <laughs> Level 9 steel balls. The marksman. Well, wow, that's tempting for Steel Sin. Yeah, I don't think it's the answer. Just in case Blue then goes mothership on the overlords, he can't just instant. Wow! Oh, okay. I was gonna say, dude. Holy crap. Elio actually picking up the steel balls there, man, and then just yeeting them for a crazy amount of supply. I think that was like 900 supply or something he just got. Maybe a thousand uh, from selling those guys. Upgrades on both of the overlords. And I should also point out high explosive ammo on the stangs as well. Okay. Yeah, so Elio has incredible chaff clear potential right now. Steel Sin. Opting into not just the three melting points, but also picking up an additional melting point. Crawler and range enhancement on these nerds. Look at this rhino drop, by the way. It's just going to sit on these <laughs> stangs right here and actually pick up a few kills on impact. Which, I mean, it's not nothing. Huge cap of fire coming down on the ground here from blue as well. I'm worrying for steel, sir, dude. I don't know about this, man. This amount of stangs, all with explosive ammo. I feel like blue just wins the chaff war too hard now. Especially with all this fire on the ground. You know what I'm saying? Oh, look at even the mass barriers. Oi, 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 dude. Oi, 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 oi. Here we go. Okay. Get a little bit of automatic camera going. Crawlers are not going to make it to the Stormcallers this time. With this many stangs and uh, explosive ammoing those guys down. And here we go, dude. And just like that, by the way, like all of the small chaff is basically dead on Steel Sin's side. And look at how safe everything else is for blue, man. Like the melting points are all well and good. And they are producing crawlers with subterranean blitz that should make it across the fire. So they are doing a little bit of something. It's going to be enough, though, dude. I think a lot of them still died in the fire, you know. Oh, squeeze out a win on this side, but that's a 1% health melting point. Oh, God, I gotta be zooming the camera out. Just not gonna be quite enough, I don't think. Oh, my God, is it? <gasps> the Phoenix is actually just focus fire. <laughs> the goddamn stags. Holy crap, okay. This is close as hell, man. Look at this, but 29 people watching this game. <laughs> Tech specialist picks up without any thought at all for Elio. He knows exactly what he wants to do. Tank production coming out from Steel Sin. Okay. <laughs> Missiles dropping. People had enough of this goddamn chaff. Distracting nerds. Oi, 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 oi. I'm quite surprised to not even see the War Factory unlocked yet. But I mean, hey, he's eking out these wins. Here comes the mothership on the Overlords. Additional Overlord comes out. I believe Elio can sell and... Oh, he already used Mass Recruit. Never mind. I was about to talk some nonsense. Okay. Mobile Beacon. Gonna wiggle those crawlers back and forth. At least those that survived the missile hit. Not going any more into the melting points. We actually have a level 3 Overlord here as well. Thing is not playing. Alright. It's Elio with cash left to burn. You can hit the plus speed button. Barrier, barrier, maybe. Something to that effect. 
I wonder if he's just going to save the cash and gamble. Okay, no, we saw a sell. He definitely wants to do something right now. But what exactly? There's only so much he can do. Okay. Clicks the attack enhancement button. There's a swollen amount of plus attack. And these overlords are hitting like absolute trucks now. I won't go automatic camera this one. Let's stick with like a static camera, I guess. Fire in the ground, just absolutely devastating, man. Crawlers are so close to making it through, just not quite. The fire over here is utterly, utterly devastating. Mulching all of the stangs. Stangs here getting a little bit stuck, just hitting uh, sledgehammers for a while, but now they get to connect again on some high value targets here. And God, I don't know, dude. I don't know, man. Another wave of wasp comes out. There's still enough stangs left alive to get those dead. And oh my goodness. Just like that, man. Just enough stangs left alive to kill off that other wasp spawn. Allows the melting points to connect and steals in. Is the cat, is the feline that topples Napoleon, dude. Oh my god. What a game, man. Dude, that was that felt like it was on a knife's edge <laughs> for a lot of that game. Not gonna lie, man. Okay, man, so who's unbeaten, dude? Who's unbeaten? We've got some Asia player, five and O, oh, whose name sadly I can't read. Not bad with Cyrillic, but that's a touch too far. Uh Steel Sin, obviously. Oh my god, I think that I think that's it. I think we have our finalists, man. It's Steel Sin making another swing at the title. That game coming up just next, I suppose. And all right, grand final time, boys. Turns out by the grand final between two unbeaten folks. Those are the three folks who were unbeaten. There's actually a couple of Asian players right here, man. So we've got aerial specialists here on blue tanks, crawlers, uh, Maxman. Good up against a mass chaff and stang opener with Maxman specialist on red. Oi, 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 oi. Okay, man, let's see what crazy strats are on display here, dude. Again, both of these players, literally five wins, zero losses, man. So let's just see how it pans out, shall we? It looks like it's just going to be too much chaff to handle here uh, for these poor, poor marksmen. On the first round, <coughs> you got to feel a little bit for blue here. Uh, Standing off against Stangs plus chaff with marksmen. It's definitely no fun. Okay, Scorpion gets snapped up by red straight away. Uh, yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, a couple steel balls, maybe. Could be worth, I suppose. Ooh, goes for the wasps. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, they'll slow the stangs down a little bit. These kind of feel like glorified chaff, though. Whereas the Scorpion on the other hand feels like it gets decent value from red, which is one of my complaints with the patch, I suppose. But I feel like there's only so much the developers can do about that with this new experimental feature. Feels like, yeah, you get the same unit choices as your opponent, but sometimes the unit choices just, I don't know, they, they, they just do better into what you're playing. And there's no options that you can go that do well into what they're playing, you know. So feels a little bit one-sided sometimes. Not that it's usually that game deciding uh, super, super early on. Anyways, man. Crawlers come out. A little bit of Stormcaller action. At least the Stormcallers will give us some means to maybe connect with these nerds. Double Arclight coming out from red. Going back for the Arclights and floating. Maybe 200 supply. Oh, not floating it, rather. Just banking 200 supply. Uh, for now. Maybe? He's thinking long and hard about this one, man. Okay, I thought maybe he might go mass recruit. Uh, and drop an extra bit of chaff. You gonna stick with the what he's got? Really, a lot is gonna depend on these Stormcallers, man. They get a good connection here on the Aki. I'm just gonna buy a little bit more time for the Crawlers on the front line. Does make a huge difference. Nice, the Crawlers actually split here as well. That's really, really good for blue. This side obviously not going so hot. Max been getting some really, really good connections here. But this side, pretty tight, man. Crawlers split nicely. Stormcallers get the early Acolyte kill. Big dub over here, man. Now, do they actually have what it takes to finish this thing? That's a whole other matter. They've got to get this building killed right here. As soon as possible. If these Stormcallers have any chance of getting these guys dead. 
uh, while their movement speed is slowed. Oh, nice. They will actually get to turn around and connect here. The wasps, a little bit of tickle damage. Do they actually get this thing dead? Oh my god, they're actually gonna do it, I think. Only just. Oi, 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 real close. Okay. And blue is gonna strike back, man. There it is. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Blah, 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 blah. Subsidize Sting. I mean, subsidize Sting or skip, right? Unless someone's going to do some meme action with uh, just like a crazy wasp flood or something to that effect, but can't see it. Elite Phoenix, improved Steel Ball. Yeah, these are very good cards, man. It kind of feels like subsidized Mustang or nothing. But okay. Stang's picked up by Blue. Doesn't actually have them unlocked yet. I do wonder if he will. Subsidized Stang also comes out for red as well. And he's going to push that advantage quite hard. That said, the Stormcallers and Tanks are already on the field. So I kind of feel like it's a bit of a momentum shift in favor of Blue. On this round, I feel like Subsidized Mustang is worth a lot less for red. Even though it was like the best choice that he could probably go for. I feel like it was already just like passively worth a lot less for red. Just given what's already on the field. Uh, for blue. 50 supply left for blue and he does not opt to unlock the uh, Mustangs. Curious. Okay. These storm callers. Uh, sorry, these storm callers. These crawlers could cause a little bit of uh, an annoyance here. Many, many Stangs. No tech options picked up by anybody just yet, which is often what you see in these high MMR games. People are really, really biding their time with uh, tech upgrades. You don't really want to show your hand to your opponent, right? As soon as you've picked up a tech, your opponent kind of knows what they're dealing with. They can kind of prep against it a little bit. Even higher map players are not immune to falling prey to that sometimes, as we saw with the Mecha Napoleon uh, just a game before. Where he picked up range on his overlords and felt kind of locked in with the overlords at that point. Kind of flags your plan a little bit too early sometimes. Okay. Not the case this game though. Ooh. Who went for that? The absorption module out on the scorpion. Oh my god. And just mass storm calls coming out. Right. Upgrades on the tanks. Now we do see the staying start to come down a little bit. Okay. Up on either side. We get the good old classic improved firepower control system on some of the stangs, plus range as well. Alright. I think I like it. I think I like it quite a bit. I'm certainly curious to see how this absorption module uh, works out. I mean, it's definitely a really, really powerful item since its latest batch of buffs. Oh, yo, 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 the damage on these Mustangs right now, dude. They were able to take out the... Oh, so many missiles connecting there, though. That's really, really painful. Oh, my goodness. Honestly, things are really quite tight on this side as well, man. Just a complete storm call to show it out at this point. We're definitely going to see more shenanigans in the middle of the map. On the next round. Maxman drops. Uh, just to distract the hell out of the Stormies. Absolutely even trade on the right side there. But in the end, it is the Stormy pumpage from Red. In the last round. That proves to be decisive. Mass produced fortresses. It's funny, man. Usually you see mass produced fortress come out. I feel like people would ninja pick that, man. For just like mass fortress fang builds, I swear you just don't see those anymore. And it's not that they were like particularly nerfed or anything, it's just people just get better at adapting to uh, taking out meta builds, you know. Neither player going for flaming uh, storm callers just yet, uh, incendiary bomb storm callers just yet, which I'm a little bit surprised by. Just obviously both players will have also scouted out that the other player went for subsidized Stang at this point. They're both seeing Stangs on either side of the field. Kind of feel like maybe 
one of them will be pushing the incendiary bomb button. Uh, kind of soon. Just to help mow these guys down. Mow these guys down. But nothing just yet. Wow, we actually see levels on the wasps. You know what, man? We've seen this before, though, in many a meme video. You can't underestimate the single pack of wasps. Especially if they get to, like, level 4 or something. Kind of unaccosted. Right? And then suddenly you come out with the elite maximum plus range and they just stay out of range of the enemy stangs forever. They've got that crazy range advantage and they become a real menace. Obviously right now they're just dying. <laughs> they're just, they're just scrap metal right now, I know, but... You know how even this is, by the way. It's just Stang Stonecaller versus Stang Stonecaller, so it's not surprising that it's that even. Crazy pellets being traded in the middle. Looks like it's just about going to go to blue this time. But it's literally just death by inches here for both players, man. Which is what you want to see in your finals. Nobody wants to see just like a snowball victory. Round six and neither player is really under like... Uh, neither player's really lost a quarter health here. Six lots of level one phoenixes. That is big. Even with the stangs on the field, that is big. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be the phoenixes, right? Just got to be. I mean, what else could you go? You could go, like, what? Go the steel balls, give them armor or something. But then if your opponent goes the phoenixes, you're just dead, right? So you kind of have to just go the phoenixes here. Probably have to give them range as well. You don't want them to just be gunned down by the enemy stangs. Yeah, there's the range. That's going to come off for both players, right? Yeah, they both went phoenix range. Of course they did. And it turns out that it is actually Red who hits the incendiary bomb button first. Ooh, <laughs> quickly followed by blue. Wow, dude, these guys are on like such a like such a similar wavelength. Even their builds are very very similar. Few maxmen, big max. Oh, the maxman was just sold actually, as I was making that point. But sledgehammers, and then like arc lights and scorpions. That's the only real difference between the builds right now. Starting to diversify now just a little bit with fangs coming out. Um, or rather, just more fangs coming out to sort of bolster the front line and stagger in his late chaff uh, for red, which is never a bad play. That said, it's kind of counteracted by the fact that the incendiary bomb button was pushed on this turn. Dude, they basically have the same goddamn comp going. Like, the only real difference is the wasps. Uh, and then, like, sledgehammer versus scorpion. On either side. Oh yo 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 yo! I suppose this is how you can tell it's like super high MMR, right? A super high skill battle. When you don't see much deviation. It's a pretty surefire sign. The wasps are not really getting in though to get any experience farmed here. They might just end up level locked at level 3. I wouldn't be surprised if we just see those guys get sold. Um, on the upcoming round. Lots of fire on the ground. I mean, it's just too close to call, what the hell. I mean, it looks like Red, I guess, is just getting the advantage. You're winning slowly until you're not, I suppose. It's actually an avalanche of damage, mostly from the Phoenixes, right? And the fact that the Scorpion survived. All right, man. It's going to take something big here. Both going for range specialists, because of course they are. Doubling up on the Storm Callers on Blue's side. I don't know if that's going to cut it. I really don't know that that's going to cut it. Little surprised to not see, like, a cell come out on the wasps and just drop a war factory uh, for missile defense. To be honest. Like, the barriers, aren't they just gonna die? Like, couple sentry turrets aren't really gonna get this done, man. I gotta give this in favor quite steeply to Red right now. I'm not sure if this is the answer. Red's still with 850 supply left to go. He's gonna barrier up a little bit himself. He's easily winning the chaff battle. At present, and I don't think additional Stormies on Blue's side are really going to cut it. Are really going to swing the tide too hard in the other direction. Ooh. Subterrene Blitz on the Crawlers to match his opponent. Allows them to squiggle their way through the fire. It's always a must. As soon as your opponent goes Incendiary Bomb, you got to get that Subterrene Blitz up and running. Would you look at this even? Crawlers right here are just going to bum rush these storm callers, man. That's naughty right there, dude. Got enough supply to also click the high mobility button. 
Ooh, ops to update, uh, upgrade a bunch of phoenixes instead? Not sure about that. But all right. The crawlers are rushing. Oh, they do get met in time by blues crawlers, so they're not actually going to make it in. Wasps, once again, looks like they're just going to get turned into scrap metal. They're stopping off at a decent range now. No, they don't actually have a range upgrade. They're just killing crawlers. But okay. It's just a storm caller fiesta at this point. Spin the camera around just a little bit. Get a bit of a better vertical angle. Of what we got going on here. Ooh. Are the storm callers actually turning the tide here? They are, man. I really didn't think they'd have it in them. I mean, it's still real close. But they're just about going to keep blue in this. Good news. I was kind of a little bit worried there that this final might end with something of a whimper. But there it is. Now both players have time to sort of react to this, which is what we want. How much supplies uh, either side got to play with here? 1600 apiece. Yeah, we see the... Oh my god! Oh, that's so huge. I mean, there's no option here for either player. They've both just got to go to the war factory. They've both just got to go missile interceptor. Factory here, factory here. Of course, red goes for it as well. Oh my God. Okay, but well, this just got real. This just got real, real quick. Oh, yo, 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 dude. There it is. Missile interceptor, missile interceptor coming out the same time for either player. Holy crap, dude. Now, Red has a crap load of supply to play with. I don't know what he just sold, um, but I guess it was something big. Because he has a thousand supplies still to burn, even after buying a war factory and picking up that upgrade. And would you look at this? Oh my god. Now, this is officially impossible for me to call. I have no idea who comes out ahead on this. 900 supplies still to burn on Red's side. I mean, God, what do you do here, man? Smack a melting point? Shields come out? Nah, just, just, Phoenix, just more phoenixes are going to come down. I mean, the phoenixes are getting, like, they're getting a lot of work done. They have been really important in this game. Speed button is available to push. Uh, for red, you got to imagine that his final 50 supply is going to go there. Doesn't spend it. Really not valuing the unit movement speed. But all right, dude, here we go, man. This one deserves a more cinematic camera, I believe. So missiles on either side are really going to struggle to connect, at least in the opener here. We've got a melting point driving back and forth. Only one missile oh, has got to connect to ignite all of that oil, and that torches all of the mid chaff. Now this war factory... Is getting connected on, but we have the two raid bosses also duking it out on this side. Looks like blue's connected first, and red's is getting connected on by not just the war factory, but a whole swarm of phoenixes. It's going to drop first, and that's going to allow the storm callers to gain a whole lot of purchase. This guy just driving through the fire, doesn't give a damn. Is there enough firepower left on the right side for red to take it over here? Doesn't look like it, as the phoenixes go up in smoke, and even though the war factory dies, there's just too much power left alive in the air and oh my god okay even without even with the war factory living on one percent even if the war factory died it still would have been too much to contend with and would you look at that dude it's the underdog well not so much an underdog everyone is like crazy high skill in this tournament so you don't really have underdogs to be honest if you get into the grand finals like this but blue takes it against the former champion dude on red you kind of love to see it, man. Wow, dude. What a fight. What, what a final round, man. With the crazy new patch War Factory drop. Yeah. That was awesome. Hey, hope you all did enjoy this happy little tournament cast, boys. Just going to head on back. Make sure that we have checked out everything here. Oh, yo, yo. Steel Sane is still battling it out. Let's see if Steel Sane can secure a tide for getting on. Ooh, it's real close, man, against Scare. Portable shield. Okay, Scare's going for the skip. Obviously, I can't really judge which of these I would take, given that I can't see either either player's armies just yet. Portable shield comes out in the end. Oh, wow. We've got acid scorpions on the field. We have ranged Vulcans. 
a swarm of phoenixes going up again. Oh, wow. Okay. Mass wasp chaff by the looks of things for red. Completely unupgraded. All level one. Scorpions seem to be real popular. Along with Stormcallers. Uh, in most of these games today. And all right. Steel same with not much supply left to burn. He's going to go for range and speed. Because obviously. Maybe just worth clicking the uh, defense enhancement button. If you're still sin. Ooh, he borrows money. What's he looking to do here, man? Just a couple barriers. A couple barriers. Can still afford to press the uh, defense enhancement. Never mind. Decides to score for the triple barrier. And alright, man. Let's just see who takes this. For the hell of it. As we wrap this one up. Oh my god, so many wasps just died up on the top there, by the way, to that missile. Oi, 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 oi. The fire mixed with the green artillery shots from the scorpions looks so goddamn cool, dude. It looks so tight. Hey, anyways, as I was saying, before we jump into this game, hope you all did enjoy this happy little tournament cast. It's kind of rough to do all of these. They're very, very long. You know, I've got to be able to find the time during the evening to sit down and cast the full thing. It's a little tough sometimes, but when I can do it, it feels real good. Ooh. Blue getting the building killed? Does that change anything? Is he actually able to do this? It looked like Steel Sin was kind of doomed here. Still might be. Another big acid shot lands. He needs to kill like one more scorpion to definitely be alive. And oh my god, I didn't even notice the phoenix. It's actually not even over yet. We going to around 10, dude. Holy crap. All right. I mean, we're here for it. Might skip the entire deployment phase here, and there's nothing I can do about it because we joined this game sort of late. Oi, oi, oi. Double Electromag drop. Wiping out the shields, almost anyway, for both players. Oh, trying to get the zoom right. And we might as well spectate at the end of this one now. Huge acid, uh, acid shot here, applying acid to the melting point. As the missiles come in, it's not long for this world. Dying at exactly the same time as the Vulcans, and it's going to come down to just a huge artillery battle once again. Shields just buying a bit more time for blue. Could that be the difference maker? Oi, oi, oi. They actually connect on the building. And as such, they're just going to wipe everything on this side now. Steel Sand might actually take this, you know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh my word. The wasps are going to take the dub for red. Are you kidding me, man? Oh, they're going to take so long to kill this. Can they even kill this in time? They can't kill this in time, man. <laughs> it's gonna go to around 11, dude. What is this? <laughs> 60 people watching this game right now, by the way. No surprise. I mean, everyone who just watched the, uh, the two Asian players throw down. Oh! And now, obviously, watching this, both players going for double hacker. Wow. Still saying going for the range on the hackers. I mean, surely he's gonna go for the barriers as well. He has enough supply to also push that button. You've got to assume. Yeah, the hacker drop in the end game can be so, so good. Uh, just because of the barriers, right? It's all they're really there for. Wait a minute. 700 supply left. We're definitely going to push that button, right? It's too much barrier to pass up. Okay, yeah, he's positioning the, the hackers now. He hasn't forgotten about them. Thought for a second. I was just a little bit worried there for a moment. There it is. Here it come. Very good. And even another hacker coming down as well. Wait a minute. The hacker barriers did not come out. Those were just placed barriers, dude. Well, color me surprised. Let's spectate them up this one. Dude, I love the acid scorpions, man. They're so Necron, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yo, 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 dude. Yeah, they look so cool. Oh, wow. I actually got a steal on the Vulcan there. Then it got stolen back. <laughs> and then it's been stolen again. And then it was stolen back. And then it dies. <laughs> oh, Change hands like 
five times before dropping in the end. Oh, man. No, both players sped up. They're ruining the spectacle. Oh, so close again, dude. No. That's it. <laughs> One unit survived. Dude, what is this game, dude? This, this is just... Okay, the javelin comes out. I mean, you gotta imagine that javelin's great for both players at this stage. You don't really want to go into economy cards at this point in the game. How the hell is this still going, dude? I really want to have the chat toggled on to see what people are laughing about and stuff. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't want any spoilers for uh, how the game ends. Okay, Scorching Flames on the Vulcans. These are pretty well-leveled Vulcans at this point as well, so they are going to help to torch these barriers pretty sharpishly. Um... So long as they can get in there to do that. You wonder if Steel Sim will prep a barrier to try and protect these uh, backline stangs. At this stage, because he knows the missile's coming in. I mean, he's also going to land his own missile as well, and it will clip wasps too. So this is a really devastating missile coming in from Steely. Still no levels coming out on the wasps for blue either. Oh, man. That's a huge javelin coming in from Red Men. That's going to do some real damn. Then again, it can't actually break through the Scorpion Shield even. I didn't notice this was a level 3 Scorpion with Shield, so it's going to live at least. This, on the other hand, kills everything, right? Yeah. Blue definitely getting the better of the barrier battle here. And here we go, I guess. There were also additional wasps. Oh my god. They were all in my frame rate, dude. There were also additional wasps purchased from Red as well. So we're asking a lot of the Stangs here, given that some of them were actually picked off by that starting missile as well. Oh my god, dude. Okay. The hacker barrier is doing a lot of work for Steel Sane on this occasion. Seeing him caught up with those. How is this scorpion alive with 1% health, but it has full barrier, dude? What even happened there, man? <laughs> how does that even how does that even occur? Okay, surely somebody's winning this time. Both buildings go down. Enough scorpions survive. That's gonna be 300 damage a pop. And there it is, man. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Let's return on the lobby. Dude. What a tournament, man. What do you mean next round? What is this? Is this going to be like the ultimate grand final now? Between Steel Sin and Mr. Blue? That we just saw last time? Oh my god. It is going to be... It, it, this is going to be a grand final, dude. What am I... Of course you can't have two people who are 6 and 0. Oh. oh my... Okay, dude. All right, all right, all right. Let me get set for this. i got to get a drink. Well, oh my goodness, gentlemen. Do we have a game on our hands here, man? It's Mr. Steel Sin versus... Asian streamer. I'm so sorry, man. I wish I could read this name, man, but I can't do it. <laughs> Blue versus red. Maximum specialist against giant specialist over here, man. Sledgehammer opener versus Acolyte Phoenix opener. Let's see how this one pans out, man. Acolyte's going to get a whole lot of work done against the Crawler boys. We'll get a little bit tiger locked on the sledgehammers eventually, if it lives long enough to actually, um, you know, to actually do so. But as it would appear, Phoenix's Maxman. Gonna just eradicate all these sledgehammers, man, and take a fairly free round one win. Steely. All right, all right, all right. A lot at stake now, man. Both these players, once again, are six and oh, dude. Been straight popping off. Couple storm callers either side. Yeah, it's gotta be. Ooh, Steel Sin mixing up his uh, Stone Caller positioning. Usually we see them go here and here. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I look over to the side and they're in exactly that position. Never mind, there you go. Okay, man. Fangs come out. Yeah, more Fangs coming out. Okay, dude. I'm going to mass recruit over here as well. I wonder if we're going to go a huge brain and just, yeah, throw some chaff in the middle. Maybe Crawler's coming down here next round. Just to sort of counteract these. And alright, man. 
good old Stone Cold is you can't have a decent MMR game without, like, what? Two to four packs of Stormies coming down. They just do too much uh, for such a small price tag. You sort of see them all the time. But okay. Phoenix is actually going to get gunned down here a little bit. they got to get these maximum dead if they're going to cash in on the free win. But they are getting pewed. That might be it, to be honest. Stonecall is a little bit behind in this trade right here. Going to start to fall. It looks like it's going to be a swing back in the favor of red. We're now playing Giant Specialist. you got to be careful, man, of those crazy round three Giants coming down. They do have the supply to do it. And then some. Absorption module. Deployment special. Yeah. Kind of the predictable, but deployment specialist making sense. And it's just going to be more sledgehammers coming out for red. Really believing in those, dude. Even up against the phoenixes and what have you. Sledgehammer's coming out for blue as well. Both just sort of feeling it. Also with defense enhancement coming out for red too. Alright, man. So each player just happy to, I guess, diversify their build. In these opening few rounds, which is often what you see. Only red really leaning heavily into one unit here. Which I can't blame them. I love sledgehammers too, man. I think they're just crazy as hell. Probably one of the like the, probably one of the strongest units in the game right now. Feels like. Not because they're like particularly good at anything, but they're also not really bad at anything either. Well, besides dealing with this, obviously. Okay. Oof. It's a nasty opening salvo missiles. Nearly losing a couple of uh stormies there right off the bat. Relying a little bit heavily on the sledges to get the chaff dead on this side. Bit rough, especially with that arc light dead. The last remaining crawlers here might just cause a little bit of a thorn in the side. This side going a bit better for red. And all right. So at least Steel Sin has a more one-dimensional ish build to come to up against right now. You gotta be happy against that. You know right now, okay, I gotta deal with the sledges. I gotta get more units that just handle the goddamn sledgehammers. Um, gotta wonder if it's just gonna be a giant. Oh, hang on. It's more... Like, to be fair, Steel Sin already has a couple of, like, sniper-style units, right? Oh, he only has one maximum, but... He already has pretty good units at killing off sledgehammers. Not too bad, at least. If he can just wade his way through the chaff a little bit faster... Then that might be more beneficial than just rushing into something like a fortress or something, you know? Something that can just one tap these guys. Or like a scorpion or whatever. Phoenixes. More snipers against these guys. Plus range as well. That's a whole lot of phoenixes now. Damn good answer into these uh, sledges. It's his chaff killing potential that I'm a little bit worried about. These are blue tanks now as well, so they're not going to wait around for no man. These crawlers get to buy them at even a little bit of time. We might see Blue's forces just start to melt away a little bit too fast here. Uh, they win the chaff battle at around this, around a similar time-ish. The Phoenix is getting a hell of a lot done. Looks like they were definitely the correct option. And even though the chaff battle is really, really equal, just the Phoenix superiority, maybe? Just gonna take that nerd out, and with that, there's nothing left to actually kill the Phoenixes. All right, man. Wrinkle brain phoenixes, dude. Doing a whole lot of work. We might even see some levels come out on these phoenixes, actually. Just because they're up against blue tanks and now overlord. Wouldn't be surprised to see a couple of them get levels. Yeah. A couple of level drops on these guys. Okay. Junior manufacturing specialist. Also coming out. And that was speed specialist from red. Okay. I wonder, are we going to see Mechanical Rage right now from Red then to really capitalize on that? We are not. Just the Wasps coming down, man. It's actually Steelsin who goes into range on the Sledgies. Trying to turn that tide a little bit uh, on the ground battle. Wasps might be a little bit of a problem. 
No real easy answer. Uh, for dealing with the wasps. That said, not much really changed on this side of the map. It's really this side where Red is looking to make some gains here. As the wasps push forwards, as long as they are tanking the phoenixes, then the sledgehammer should do much, much better uh, in the ground battle for Red here. Speed specialist, blue tanks, and it looks like, yeah, they're just going to start to win the ground battle here. With some ease, at least until all the wasps are dead, now the phoenix is just clean house. So you know, all things considered, it ends up being quite equal. Cancelling each other out. Once again, Steel Sin holding on this side. As we sort of predicted, nothing really changed over there so much. But more impressive is that he actually held on this side too. Alrighty. Enhancement module becomes available in quite a timely fashion. Ion Blast. I mean, you can always get some decent value from Ion Blast. Enhancement module may be better for Steel Sin, given that he's ahead. And he can take his time a little bit more. With uh, buying and selling units and what have you. He's thinking long and hard about it, man. Maybe he's just going to try and finish the game quickly. Uh, with the Ion Blast. Meanwhile, Red is up to all kinds of shenanigans. Iron Blast it is from Steel Sam, man. He's just going to go for it. He's playing the, uh... He's playing to win the game quickly. Right here. 700 supply left to burn. Everything spent on things like barriers for the wasps for Red. So Red's kind of showing his hand here, right? He's kind of showing his hand at this point. Overlords come down sort of en masse. The barrier comes out on the wasps. You know exactly what he's trying to do, right? He's trying to set up an overlord spam. Uh, with Mothership. Wasp Chaff are coming out. But Steel Sin now on the back line. They will get a little bit mulched, but they just have to buy enough time for the Phoenixes, which... Ooh, look at the positioning. This Iron Blast dude. Not bad from Steel Sin too. Also taking out one of the Overlords. Beam just missing one of these nerds over here, but that's about all that's got it. Like, the damage is sort of done. One Phoenix, not going to be enough to bring down all of these Wasps and the Overlord. So we're going to be relying on winning heavily over here, which, thankfully for Steely, is actually going to happen. Ooh, they're going to get the counter kill on the building, though. Still not quite over this. Oof. Oi, oi, oi. Oh my god, they actually kill all of the Phoenixes so quickly there, dude. Crazy Tiger prioritization. This Overlord's just going to burn these guys down now. And it is going to be a round win for Red. Damn. That was such a well-positioned Iron Blast, dude. Okay, man. What options? Unit options? I can feel it. Yes, it is. Ryan, the mass hackers again just for the barriers, man. Oh, seven stacks of stangs. <laughs> that might be really, really good for Steel Sin. Um, yeah. Yeah, that might be really good for Steel Sin, just because he has the range of the sledgehammers already. Like, he's gonna, obviously going to go range of the stangs now. He also knows he's going into mass overlords, right? There's the goddamn mothership coming out. This is the problem, man. You kind of, like, telegraph your play. And then you just get a huge drop of stangs like this, which we're almost certainly going to see range, right? Range at a minimum, potentially even aerial specialization as well. Depends how good of a read uh, Steel Sin feels he has on this. Looks like he's going to go for one or the other. Goes for the old incendiary bomb storm callers on the field first. Seven packs of stangs, dude. That's so crazy, man. Straight into the subterranean blitz as well. Knowing that his crawlers are going to have to run through fire. He has the option now of borrowing cash to get range on the stangs. Or selling something and getting range on the stangs. Yeah, he's going to borrow the cash and get the range of the stings. Okay, I was thinking maybe he sells this one lone Maxman here. Uh, instead. But alright, dude, here we go, man. Here we go, dude. Is the wall of hacker barriers going to be enough and buy enough time here? Oh, the problem is a lot of units are just running in front of the barriers. And so, yeah, the hacker barriers are living, but it's because they're just not being attacked. It's everything else that's dying first. And just the mass of stangs 
and making it so that basically no wasps that get spawned out of these overlords are lasting any longer than a second. And oi 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 oi. Yeah. I don't see how uh, I don't see how blue can possibly lose this round at the stage. Is this gonna be enough damage is the real question. It's just a lot of units. Yeah, that's gonna be enough. Oh, it's gonna be enough by a lot. Sometimes it's hard to tell, man, when the storm callers are in the mix, because they actually count for like 50 damage a pop. Uh like per uh model on the field. And so there it is, dude. Quite a staggering win in the end. For Steel Sin. Also a little bit surprised at the hacker choice, man. Like, usually it's a good one uh, for red to go into. You go into, like, the hacker option um, and just drop the barriers, and it has just a hell of a lot of impact. But you almost feel like maybe just going, like, I don't know, some missile defense and then just stacking up all of the stangs and just rushing in with them maybe maybe would have had more impact. Oh, yo, 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 yo. I don't know. There's a few ways that last round could have went. Either way, man. Steel Sin. Championi, dude. Seven straight wins to take the title in this tournament, dude. Holy crap, man. What a good one. So amazing in this one. Hope you all did enjoy the happy little tournament cast that was this. Well, it's going to be a pretty long-ass video. Let's be real. Hey, thanks for watching, though. Hope you all did enjoy it. And I shall catch all of you all just a tad bit later, man.